Yo, if you've gotten this far, do not quit now. That was the hardest part of the course, I promise you. The next couple of videos are easier, they're more fun. That was the hardest part. We had to get through that because all of that stuff, optionals, structs, classes, are fundamental to writing Swift code. But now that we've gone through that, I think we can start cruising through the rest of this playlist. So I promise you, the rest of this playlist gets easier. And then the next playlist, the Swift UI Bootcamp, is even more fun than this one because the next playlist is all about creating screens. And when you create the UI, it's a ton of fun. So do not quit now. If you've gotten this far, you've already done the hardest parts. We're gonna cruise through the rest of this. In this video, we're gonna look at access control. Not all of the types of access control, but just the most common ones. And in layman's terms, what this means is, in the last couple of videos, you probably noticed that I used this keyword private a couple of times. Uh, private has, of course, a meaning, but I haven't really explained it in detail yet. So this video, we're going to look at what it means to make something private or not private. Generally, at a high level in our code, we want to make everything as private as possible. As private as possible, which doesn't mean that everything is private, but it means when we can make something private, we probably should. So I remember when I was learning how to code, most of the time when you're learning how to code, you're kind of just in a project yourself and you're writing all of the code. And so whether or not something is public or private is less important if you know everything that's happening in your app. But one thing that I've learned and I'm happy to share with you guys is that the more experienced you get and the larger the projects you work on are, the more important it is to actually utilize this access control. So when a senior developer sees something marked private or not private, there's a lot of implications that will go through their head. Understanding that level of access helps us understand how this piece of data can get updated. And so when reading code or reviewing code or debugging code, having these access controls in place is a huge head start for development teams. And at least in my experience, I would say the more, when you work with like really senior experienced engineers, they're probably gonna get on your case to really start marking everything as some sort of access control. The more specific we can be, the better. So that was a lot of talking. In reality, it's really not that much code. It's marking something as private or not. Let's jump into our project and create a couple examples. Okay, okay, welcome back everybody. My name is Nick, this is Swiffel Thinking, and we're gonna take a deep dive here into access controls. We're gonna look at private versus public variables. I've been using it a little bit in the last couple of videos, but let's actually dive into it now. So I'm gonna right click, create a new playground page, and let's just call this access control. And it's literally controlling what can access what data. So I'm gonna delete some of this and let's try to move a little quicker here because I can't wait to get you guys to actually building apps. This is, learning this stuff is definitely boring. Learning the UI and the actual apps is much more fun. So let's try to get through some of this first. I'm gonna create a struct and I'm gonna call it movie, movie model. So maybe I'm building an app for movies and every movie is gonna have a title of type string. And maybe every movie is gonna have a genre as well. John Ruh. and maybe there's only a couple different genres in my app so I will create an enum called movie genre and I will make genre of type movie genre all right now well, what are the genres in our app let's do maybe a case for comedy maybe there's action and maybe there's horror these will be all of the possible genres in our app all right, and then we're going to create a class and I'm going to call this my movie manager. And in here, we're going to do some things with some movies. All right, and in here, let's create a variable called movie one. We'll set it equal to a movie model. All right, and a movie model will give this a title of maybe avatar. And the genre is maybe action. All right, and then let's actually, before we keep going, let's actually create a constant here called is favorite of type pool. So maybe the user gets to flag whether or not they have favorited this movie. So let's add in here is favorite and let's set it equal to false to start. I'm gonna create another one called var movie two. 
And I'm going to do the exact same thing, movie model. Let's make this one maybe Step Brothers. Let's make this a comedy. And his favorite will also be false. And then let's do another one, VAR Movie 3. Movie model. And let's do Avengers. Action. And his favorite, false. I'm sure somebody watching here has to like at least one of these three movies. Oh, if you had to pick one of these three, which one are you going to favorite? Let me know. Very curious. All right. So we have this class. And again, going back to our, our and going back to the metaphor of building an app, right? The class is like the classroom. So in this movie manager, we're going to do things. Maybe we're going to update movies. We're going to change movies. We're going to change which one we're showing on the screen. And so the movie manager is a class because we're going to be doing things inside of that class. But the data model itself, the actual data is a movie and that is a struct. And then we made a movie genre because we know all of the cases for that genre. And so now we have an enum with all of these cases. All right. So here's a quick example of using a struct, an enum, and a class all together. And when we build real apps, we're using all of these together. It's not like we're going to pick one and only do one. We want to use these all simultaneously. All right. So firstly, let's get an instance of this class. So down here, I'm going to say let manager, and I'll set it equal to the movie manager. And now what we want to do is update each of these three movies so that we make them is favorite equal to true. Now, I already covered in the struct video how to mutate a struct. And I want to mutate this struct from within the struct itself. And so we're going to do that two ways. First, we're going to do it the beginner way, which is what I would recommend as you're just learning. So let's create a function here called update favorite status, pass in a new value of type bool. And this will return us a brand new movie model. And when we create this new movie model that we're going to return, we are going to first pass in the current title and the current genre. And then for the is favorite, we're going to use the new value. So we're going to create a function that creates a new movie model with all the same data, except for the one thing that we are changing. All right, let's do this in our code now. So if I want to change movie one so that is favorite is true, I could come down here and I could say manager.movie one, and I can set it equal to manager.movie1.update favorite status, and I can update it to true. So here we are setting a new version of this equal to the result of this function. And so if I print out here, manager.movie1, we should see that it is now true because that's what I set. Here we go, it's true, perfect. Before we move forward, I also wanna just do the mutating version. So just to get a little practice here, if we didn't want to do this where we return a new version, we could instead make this mutating and do update favorite status. All right. And we can set is favorite equal to the new value. And in this case, we need to make this now a variable. So this would be a private set var is favorite. And now I can mutate it as well. Either of those approaches work. If we had this in our code, we would no longer need this. Or if we had this in our code, we would no longer need this. And this could go back to being a let. Either works. You should just get familiar with both of these setups. Depending on the project, some developers might prefer one or the other. Again, so I would prefer this if I was a beginner developer. But let's actually make this a status two so that we could have both of them work at the same time. And so if we wanted to try to use this from our code, we could just come down here and we could say, instead of this, we could call manager dot movie one dot update status two with the new value of true. Let's run this and true. Perfect. All right. So we're talking about access levels here, access control. This variable is actually public. We didn't need to write it, but it is a public variable. And what that means is that anything can basically get or set the value of this. So down here, when we call let this let some value equals manager dot movie one dot movie one. Here we are getting the value from movie one. And down here in this line of code and in this line of code, we are then updating the value of movie one. So we are setting a new value. And so public means we can both get and we can set from outside of the object itself. 
So we're not doing it from inside the object. And the opposite of public is then private. And private means we cannot get or set from outside of the class. So if I try to do this exact same thing with movie manager two, let's put it here for movie two, the compiler is going to yell at us for everything. And that's because movie two is inaccessible. It is private to, so that you can only access movie two within this class. We can't access it from out here because we're not inside the class. So this is what private is. And the third one we're going to look at is what we used in the last video is called a private set var. What this means is the read is public and the set is private. So now I can read movie three, but I cannot update movie three. So this one will have a problem because we're trying to set it from outside of the class, but the setter is now private. Um, and these are the three most common access controls that we use in our code. We don't actually write public. There is a difference between actually including public and not including public, but that's really applicable when you start writing your own frameworks. And that's not for a very, very long time if you're just learning how to code. So for right now, we never really need to write public, but just know that anything that is not marked as private is not private. It is, you can consider it public. And so the last question here is if we have this private set, how do we then update movie three? Well, the reason to make a private set is so that the class can then manage this movie. So in here, we would create a funk that says maybe update movie three. And we'll just pass in a is favorite of type bool. And then in here, we can call movie three dot update favorite. And we can use either of these. So we can say update st status to is favorite. And so down here, we would then call a function called manager dot update movie three is favorite true. And if I print out movie three and run this, we should see that movie three is now true. Perfect. All right. So just to run through these three cases one more time with these functions, let's use, let's revert to using this function just because it's probably the beginner friendly one. So the first version here, we have version one and let's just say, let movie one equals manager dot movie one. And we'll say manager dot movie one equals manager dot movie one dot update favorite status true. All right. So in this version, it is again public, right? I'll put the word there. It's public. So we can both get and set the value. So here we can get and set the value from outside the object. All right, this I will note as too public. So in a larger app, we wouldn't want this ability unless we needed it because this is going to be very public. So now anything outside the app can actually update it when really we want this to be a manager so that the, the class itself is managing the data in the class. So this works, but some would consider this too public and not good coding. The second version is version two, which is private. And so in the private version, we can't get or set this. Here, we can't get or set the value from outside the object. The only way to update version two, let's just make version two down here. Movie two, movie two, movie two, movie two. This again does not work because it is private. So the only way to update movie two would be from a function in the object itself because it is private to the object itself. So this doesn't compile and this does not work. And here, let's just put a comment here. This is we can't even, we cannot access this data. Finally, we have version three. And here we can, let's copy this again, paste this down here. Movie three, movie three, movie three, movie three. 
And here we're going to say version three, we can get the value from outside the object, but we can't set the value from outside the object. All right, so when this compiles, give it a second, this is going to cause a problem because we're trying to set the value for movie three from outside of the manager. But I can now call manager dot update movie three. And then this function update movie three will set the value from within itself. So here I will put best practices. So arguably version three is going to be um, what we want to use or something like that closer to what we want to use in our actual apps. All right. I'm going to end this video here with just a final note that private and public are the by far the most common, but there are many others. There are other levels of access control and some of those are called open public, internal, file, private, and then private. And if you guys want to just maybe Google Swift access controls, I just did it real quick here. Obviously there's the Swift documentation on it, but there's also tons of medium articles about access controls in Swift. So here's one where it talks about some of the different types so open and public. And then we have other versions here, internal, file private, most restricted, and it keeps going. So you can go ahead and read some of this, but I would say at this point in your coding career, just really know that if you don't mark it as anything, it is basically public, or I guess it's technically internal, but we should try to mark things as private when we can. So the rule of thumb when writing code, and let's just say the rule of thumb is we want everything to be as private as possible because this then restricts your code so that you know, like if this is private set, I know it's only going to get edited from inside this class. So I don't need to check all of the other files in my app for what is going to be editing this. I know because it's private, anything that edits this is within the class. And when you scale that logic up to your entire app, it gets incredibly important to keep things as private as possible. And so overall, this makes your code easier to both read and debug and is good code and is good coding practice. So get in the habit of trying to start marking things as private when and wherever you can. And I think that is just a good habit to get into. All right, that is it for this one. I will leave a link to that Medium article here. You can also just Google it. Now you guys know what private and public are. You guys know what a private setter is. I would say either doing nothing, doing private, or doing a private set are by far the three most common and ones that you should get more familiar with as you start to build apps. The other ones that I mentioned here, like internal, file private, you probably will not see for a very, very long time. So I wouldn't spend a ton of time trying to learn those just yet. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.